So here's something interesting you don't see every day. And when I saw this on Facebook Marketplace yesterday, for the price that I got it at, I jumped on it. It's a propane carburetor setup. And it came off of a running rock crawler. So this thing was running. The guy decided to go in an LS with fuel injection. And he parted with this. So this is a complete running, as of like last week, propane carburetor system. And before I get into this and propane and all of that, let me bring up to speed on two other things we got going on. So here's the mule car. And I was explaining how we were going to fit the 4 liter in here. So here's a 4 liter oil pan. And this is the way she's going to sit. The sump is all behind the center link. I've got to do something with the transmission tunnel. I've got a transmission coming so that I can mock all of that up and make, make our cuts in and build out the firewall. But that's the way the motor is going to sit in here. And while we're talking about four liters, this thing up, I pulled it apart the other day and I am just going through it, cleaning parts and it's a mess. It's a real mess. So I'm just cleaning stuff and getting it ready to put it back together again. It's nothing exciting. But one of the things I want to do as soon as this is back together is, you know, I've got two of these Jeeps. They're both identical four liter 98 XJs. That's the, the black one over there is my other. So the only difference between these two, these two Jeeps is that this one is two wheel drive and that one is four wheel drive. And I want to do a back to back comparison because you guys would be surprised how much of a difference there is between the two and the four wheel drive in terms of performance and fuel mileage and all of that. So we'll do that after we get this back together again. But let's get back to this. Propane, don't trip over that stuff, Uncle Kathy. Propane carburetor setup. So why are we going to screw around with propane? And by the way, this is precisely exactly the kind of thing, the reason what we're doing the mule for, uh, because this is the kind of stuff I want to test. But why are we doing propane? Now, we've done videos in the past about vapor systems, hot vapor carburetors. We talked about hydrogen and some of the problems with those fuels. And now there's propane. And I explained that things like vaporized gasoline are extremely volatile. They expend their energy just like that. And it doesn't give the piston really a time to get away from top dead center. So you only get a few degrees of real push and then the rest of it is, is momentum more or less. Propane on the other hand has about the same burn characteristics, the same burn duration as regular gasoline does. So propane is actually a good substitute for gasoline. You get approximately 5% less power from propane. So everything else, all else being equal, if you just go from carburetor to a propane setup, you're looking at about 5% haircut. But that could be made up for it. We'll, we'll go into that in a minute. And there's also a Mad Max aspect to this too. Because we talk a lot about economically, global economic things that are going on. And, you know, sometimes you got to wonder about the availability of you know, good premium race gas, high quality gas, the price of this stuff. So there is a Mad Max aspect to this. And we'll talk about that at the end of the video. So, I guess this propane gives you about a 5% haircut over, over gasoline. So, exact size propane carburetor versus exact size gasoline carburetor, both calibrated for best performance, 5%. But the difference is propane has the equivalent of 105 octane as opposed to gasoline. Let's say you got a 93 octane gas. Well, propane is 105. So because you've got that much more octane or that much more resistance to detonation, you can get that much more aggressive with compression and ignition timing and make up for the 5% horsepower loss that way. So net net, properly tuned to their maximum abilities, there actually is more power to be found with propane. So this setup, this is what I got. I got the, the brackets. I've got the, these tanks. These are the same tanks that they put on the back of forklifts. Um, we've got this line, which isn't long enough to get the tank where I need it in that car. But these are the two main components. This is where all the magic happens. They look like they're two separate pieces, but they work in tandem with each other. So this is the regulator slash vaporizer. So our propane comes in through this hose. Now, well, I'll talk about these lines in a minute. The propane comes in through this hose, and then you've got the diaphragms here. And then this hose connects 
here, just like this, and goes to your mixer. This is called a mixer. For all intents and purposes, it's a carburetor, but this is the mixer. So the propane is held off, not allowed to flow, unless there's a low pressure signal that comes across this line. So as soon as you crank the engine, it's pulling some vacuum, it'll create a low pressure signal across the diaphragm through this hose, and then the propane can flow. And this is also where it's regulated from, the flow of propane. Now, you've got the main line coming in, and you see you've got these other two lines. So these lines are important. This is to be used with hot water. So if you're going to plumb this into your car, you would, let's say, tee off of one of the heater hoses or run a separate hot water line through this regulator because it'll ice up under high flow conditions when you're, when you're on it and this thing's moving a lot of gas, it will ice up. So that's why this has to be attached to a hot water source. Then all of the gas goes through this hose into the mixer. Now these mixers are unique. This is an Emco 450. And if you look at the bottom of this, this is a Holly 850 base plate. Now, these only flow, this is a model 425, and they flow approximately 460 CFM. So I don't know why they went with such a big base plate because it can't pull as much as is available here. And if you're going with any, let's say you've got a, a car that currently runs good with an 850 or a 900 CFM carburetor, you'd have to double up on these. So a dual quad setup or a tunnel rim. But for our purposes, and on the engine we're going to test this on, the 450 size is about perfect. So the Holly base plate is adapted to this mixer, and that's it. It's as simple a setup as that. It has a lot of benefits over working with gasoline. Like, for instance, you don't need a heated plenum because it's going in as a gas. You don't need any lighter parts of the fuel to you know, lighten things up and, and make for easy ignition. So there's no need for a heated plenum. Flow through manifold passages. You know, you see modern intake manifolds are designed with very long runners and sometimes very odd shaped plenums and they're only intended to flow air, not gasoline. So if you were to try to, let's say, inject gasoline or carburetor an intake manifold like that, it wouldn't work right because a lot of the gas would fall out of suspension during those twists and turns. Whereas on a propane setup, you're flowing the gas along with the air, and so you can use a much more modern design intake manifold, and there's a big boost in bottom end power, big boost in bottom end torque. So this is the setup that we've got. We're going to set this up. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to modify a 4-liter fuel-injected intake manifold for this base plate. And we're going to do back-to-back. -back. We'll put a 500 CFM, 400, 500 CFM carburetor and this, and gasoline versus the propane, and go back-to-back -back and see what we can get out of it. But I'm, I'm really excited. This is, this is fun stuff. These setups, you can buy these new, they're like 1200 bucks, which isn't crazy. But I got this one for like $350. I got a great deal, thank you. Um, so it'll be fun. I'm a tad apprehensive about the gas part of it because, you know, it's one thing to run this set up on like on a forklift, you know, where everything's just like wide out in the open. But now we're going to be putting that tank in a trunk and we're going to be running this line through a car. And, uh, I'm a little, just a little apprehensive about potential leaks and problem points there because <laughs> right? it, it would be pretty easy. So we're going to be extra careful when we route this thing. I'll pick up new hose for it so we know that that's all fresh. And I'll figure out some way to vent the trunk. But uh, those are, those are the, potential, <laughs> the potential drawback with this. But this is why we're doing a mule. So we can run systems like this and, and play around with them and tweak. I'm still learning about this. I have no idea how to calibrate it, how to jet it, you know, or the equivalent of jetting to get the right mixture. Uh, and it's got to be run 5% richer than gasoline for the same output. So I, I don't know if this is going to be calibrated from get-go or how we have to go about calibrating it, but that's all part of what we'll be doing once we get into it. Now the Mad Max aspect of it. Crazy times. Got crazy things going on. 
And if you've got a hot rod, you got a race car, you got a street race car, you know, and you're like, I'm running this thing now, I'm running on E85, or I'm running it on, on race gas, you know, what is, what's the availability and what's the cost going to be for these fuels going forward? And then, of course, if you're of the prepper mindset, and you're like, well, you know, if they shut down everything and, and the gas pumps don't work and so on and so forth, can I run my car on propane? And the answer is absolutely yes. Propane is a good substitute for a race fuel, for a, like a race gasoline, and it's dirt cheap. And as far as like the, the prepper end of things, you could run this stuff off your barbecue tanks. So if you're prepper minded, you could have a setup like this, sitting on the side, ready to go, and then just store up some barbecue tanks. Put them in your shed, they're easy to store, it'll never go bad. And, you know, if Teotihuacan happens, you've got some fuel. As far as economy goes, the fellow that I got this from tells me that this tank here will get me approximately regular driving now, just regular driving. This tank will get me about the same fuel mileage as a full tank of regular gasoline. So, I mean, obviously it depends on what kind of gas, what kind of mileage you normally get, but evidently that has the equivalent energy of a full tank of regular gas. So, I mean, ballpark, 175, 200 miles or thereabouts between tank fills, and I know that it's much cheaper than gasoline. So, but we're going to explore all of that too as we go forward. I can't really do anything with this now other than I may set this up on our 361 that we have on the stand over there. Just, just to make it, just to get it to work and make sure that everything functions correctly before we go ahead and actually stick it in a car and take it out in the world. But that won't be for a while. I got to get this Jeep back together again first. So, there you go. Propane carburetor. More on this pretty soon because I'm, I'm really excited about screwing around with this thing and uh that's it i'll see you tomorrow